Hola, 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 everyone. Welcome to this week's lesson on Live Life Your Way. Now I'm just getting my phone set up so that we, so that I can see your comments. Welcome to this week's lesson on Live Life Your Way. We are now on part five of developing your third eye and your intuition. And I'm so excited to be sharing this with you and to be here with you all. And I hope you guys can hear me well. Um, and I hope you're all having an amazing time. It's starting to get really cold here in New York City. Um, and, you know, we were so blessed with warm weather. Um, and now, you know, the winter has definitely set in and I'm just enjoying and embracing it this time. Usually I'm like avoiding it. But this year I'm embracing the beautiful season and really just admiring mother nature and I ask you to do the same um, because our attitude towards life it it um, definitely transforms how we experience life in many different forms and it's so important to have the mindset of appreciation um, especially when doing work around your intuition and developing yourself any personal growth the, it's appreciation is going to go above and beyond your abilities to attract things into your life. And right now, what we are working on is attracting uh, the activation of our third eye. And we're using the third eye and its development so that we can build on our intuition so that we can make decisions, right, that are effective, that, are, that feel good, and that lead us towards the direction of completing and transmuting our life, okay? So I'm really excited to be sharing with you today. Um, thank you for being here with me. Remember that if you share this video, you get entered into a drawing, and I do a raffle every month, um, to win a one hour coaching session with me. The value of that session is $200 and you get entered into it for completely free just for sharing this content on your Facebook pages. Um, so I'm really excited for that. So today, what we're going to need is our three index cards. Yes, no, maybe. Okay, and I don't know if I said them in order, I just said whatever. Um, so we're going to be using these cards today and you're going to be needing a pen and a paper or something that you write on, whether that's on your phone or something, something to write some notes on. Okay, because we're going to actually do a fun part later on with writing. So I'm excited to do this with you this week, you know. It, we're going to be focusing on receiving messages to um, questions that are more on the simple side. So you don't want to ask questions like, what is my life purpose? That's going to be really hard for you to get if your intuition isn't really built. Okay, um, so right now we're working on your development so that you can then get more accuracy in your responses. Okay, so that then you can start asking those really big questions like, who, you know, who's that love partner in my life? Should I get married? Shouldn't I? Those bigger questions. But you can't ask those questions until you have a, fa a, a foundation in your intuition and your third eye activation. So this is a continuation. This is part five. If you want to um, really enhance yourself, I suggest that you do the weekly lessons every week. This is going to really expand your intuition. I know this is what I did in the beginning and honestly I still practice these um, steps even though I have a, a highly developed intuition um, that I'm able to channel um, angels and spirit. I still work on these steps because this is the foundation, this is the basis. So no matter where you are this is helpful for you with grounding yourself as far as building on your intuition and developing it to a level where you can then use it in your everyday life um, to help you make decisions that are going to be effective for you. So you're going to need your three index cards, a pen and a paper, okay? And um, let's recite our pledge. So I have the pledge here. 
the way to get this information, the way to get the pledge and the past videos is by going to my website, miracleswithinus.net backslash pledge. Okay, if you go miracleswithinus.net backslash pledge, I'll have the information below this video once it's off live. Um, and you will get the pledge in your email and you will get access to all past lessons. So now we're up to lesson 12. So you will have access to all 12 lessons, um, which is really, really cool. And you could go and do the information as it goes for you. You know, you don't have to do all of them. Um, it's always it's up to you. So this is part five of developing your third eye and, and your intuition. And I recommend that you do do the five of those if you're going if you're interested in this series. OK, um, so here we go. I'm going to share. I'm going to state the pledge and I ask that you share it with me. I pledge that from this moment on, I will do whatever it takes to be the best version of myself. I will be kind to myself. I will love myself in every state that I am in. I will invest in my personal growth. I say yes to myself and completely embody the belief that I am more than good enough to attract all good into my life. Whew, I love saying that. And there's words in here in the pledge to trigger a response. See, the angels helped me make this pledge and they use specific words to trigger a response within our body so that we move in the direction of saying yes to our desires, to our wants and our needs. It makes it very clear as to where you are. And every time you declare it, and I recommend you declare this every single day, it sets the tone for what you're working on and what you're working towards and really creating a transformation in your life. So, woohoo! So let's get to it. Okay, let's. So we're going to do the first part pretty quickly. If this is too fast, you want to check out the previous videos one through four. OK, so here we go. We're going to have right now we're going to work on activating our third eye. So first we're going to rub our hands and we're now affirming that we are connecting to the divine universal energy. OK, and that this universe life force energy is coming through us and ch being channeled through our hands. OK, I'm a very physical person, so I need physical things to help me learn. OK, and maybe there's a lot of you out there who feel the same way. Just reading about it and knowing it does not mean that I practice or that it becomes a part of myself. So doing things that are involving my hands, my senses, all different like smell, touch, vision. I need to have that stimulation and you might find that you need that as well. So now you start feeling like your hands start building a friction. You may, it may be a little bit harder. So now we're just going to pull that energy out just a little bit. And you're going to feel the tingling of your energies moving from left hand to the right hand, left hand to the right hand, left hand to the right hand. Okay, and then you could just pull it out a little bit more and feel what it feels like to have that space, right? But also to feel that energy in between the connection that is the divine force that you're creating right now. Okay, so now we're going to transmute all the energy to come into one hand into the thumb. And we're going to place the thumb right over the third eye area to activate, okay, to activate our third eye area. And I'm doing this faster. If you go to lesson number one, I mean part number one, you will see, you will be able to do it in a, in a slower way, in an easier way if you're not sure what this is doing for you right now. Okay, so let's just letting that, right, let it activate, open up that space right here in your third eye. Third eye is where we start receiving messages. Okay, it, it builds on the trust. The trust is a big thing in the third eye. Okay, and once you start feeling like a tingling, you could remove your hand. Wonderful. 
Now you're just allowing the third eye to kind of open and pulse. If you feel like you lost the connection, go back. Right? And just hold it a little bit longer. Create that sensitivity. Sometimes tapping helps. So I'm going to turn this way. So I'm tapping my thumb in this area. Sometimes tapping helps with the activating. Okay, awakening it. So if you see just holding it doesn't work, then move into tapping. And I don't think I shared that in past videos. So hey, you learned something new with activating. Good. So now we're going to take our three cards and we're going to first practice lesson number, um, part number four first. So we just want to see where our accuracy is as far as our intuition. In order for the next part to work that we're going to be learning today in today's lesson, you have to make sure that you got down packed let part number four. Okay, so here we have yes, maybe, and no. So I ask you to shuffle, right? Shuffle the shuffle your three index. I'm just shuffling, and I don't know which one's what, right? They're facing down, and I ask that you do the same. Now place them down separated, okay? And the way that we're going to test it is that we're going to say which one's a yes. Which card is a yes? And you're going to take the card. This is not the card. You're going to take the card, place it on one hand, and then use your other hand, your dominant hand, if you like, um, and scan the card and see if you feel a tingling sensation. Okay, so I'm going to do the same. I have mine right here. I hope you can see that. So I don't know which one's yes or which one's no. And I'm going to just play along with you. And no matter what you get is okay. If you get the right one, great. If you get the wrong one, just try again until you start getting the right answer. So I'm just trying to tap into it. It's a little bit difficult, like, doing it and sharing it at the same time. So this is interesting for me because usually I'm more, I'm more concentrated Right, so which one's a yes response? Which one is the yes card? Okay, I'm going to flip this one. I got the maybe card. <laughs> so even I, that I highly intuitive, sometimes we still get off. So I'm going to do that again. Let's do it again. Ooh, ah, I dropped it. So, so funny. And guess the card that fell on the floor was yes. <laughs> I saw it because it flipped over. Ah, where? I can't even grab it. Okay. I got it now. Woo! Okay. So I'm going to shuffle them again. We're going to shuffle the cards again. All right. I don't know which one's what. Okay. You shouldn't either. Okay. And now we're just going to ask again, which one is a yes? Right? This is a little harder for me because I'm not fully focused. Which one's a yes? Let's see. I got it! Yay! Cool, cool, cool. So this is, I got the yes card. Okay, so do that exercise until you get the response correctly. I would recommend that you do it at least five times. Okay, five or six times that you start getting the right response so that you start building on it. I'm not going to do that now. You can pause me and do that when you're ready. Okay, great. So now that we have tested, you know, part number four, and if you're not sure what I'm doing, watch lesson number four. Okay, not lesson number four, part number four, which was lesson number 11. Okay, so I'm going to place these to the side right now. And now I want you to take out your pen and paper. Okay, and I'm going to give you a few, like, you know, 30 seconds or so. Um, and you can pause me and come back. And just write down three to five questions that can be answered with a yes or no response that you want to get a response for. Now, I know there's a lot of questions you may have running in your mind that you want to do. I ask that you create simple questions, okay? We'll work on developing um, and trusting more intense questions like, should I stay with my job? Should I marry this person? Should I get a divorce? Those are really big questions 
um, and they have a lot of emotional response, that will be harder right now just because you're in the beginning. Okay, so I advise you, and you could do whatever you want, however you feel. I'm just saying for really big decisions, you may want to wait as far as just listening to your intuition on that until you start feeling really strong in the foundation of your intuition. That's all I'm saying. If you feel strong in your intuition, by all means, go ahead and start asking the bigger questions. If you're still in the development stage and you're still learning and you're still very curious, I ask that you ask questions that are simple. So simple questions like, is, um, you can ask questions like, should I eat chicken tonight? Is it in my highest and best interest, right? So you want to, the should you want to like move out of your vocabulary. So what you want to replace should with is, is it in my highest interest to blah, 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 right? So is it in my highest interest to eat chicken? Is it in my highest interest to go for a walk this afternoon? Is it in my highest interest to stay late at work today? Is it in my highest interest to, you know, drink on Thanksgiving? Um, is it in my highest interest to go to my family's house on Thanksgiving? Now, that might be a little bit heavy if you have a lot of emotional stuff. Um, but for those that doesn't have too much emotion, that's an okay question. Um, so three to five questions. Go ahead. Go, go, go. Write them down. Okay. Write down your questions. Remember, simple questions that can be answered with yes, no, or maybe response. Okay, because we're going to be using the cards to do that. Okay, so now this part, I'll let, let me stay quiet. I said I was going to give you a few moments. <laughs> I get so excited. <laughs> okay, great. I think that's more than good enough. You can pause me if you need more time. Okay, great. Um, so... Now, what you're going to do is you're going to pick one of the questions. You may just pick the first one. Don't make it complicated. Pick the first question that you have, okay? And then take your, oops, oh man, I, I dropped the yes card. I'm just going to leave it on the floor. I'm just going to use the pledge card for now. But it's recommended to use the same type of index card that it doesn't have anything that can tell the difference between the two. Like right now, I could tell because this is yellow. It has writing on it that it's a different card. But for the sake of this and not having to run and get that, that index card that flew across the room, um, you want to place them, right? And I'm just putting it on here so you can see on my clipboard with my notes. So you have the three index cards. Ask your question. Now, when you're asking your question, take in a deep breath in and out. Feel grounded first, okay? Don't just go and start flipping questions, asking questions without grounding. Grounding is going to be very important. Creating the sacred space, making sure there is no distractions is going to be important for you. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to say it in your mind's eye and you're going to repeat it out, out loud. So I'm going to just do ex example, example question. And I'm going to say, is it in my highest interest to go for a walk this afternoon? Is it in my highest interest to go for a walk this afternoon? And you may say it a few times so that you could create the feeling in your body. Is it in my highest interest to go for a walk this afternoon? Is it in my highest interest to go for a walk this afternoon? And then you just center yourself and then place your dominant hand over the cards. Okay, don't touch the card, but get really close. Okay, and see where you feel a pull. Okay, so you're going to see where you feel a pull with the three cards. Right? Let me, if I turn it that way, you see it a little bit better. Um, so feel where you feel a pull. That same pull that when we did in the beginning when we were activating our hands. See where you feel that pull here. Okay. So I'm going to flip this first card. And mine said no. Now I don't have all three cards. So it's not going to be accurate for me. 
Okay, but it, is it in my highest interest to, you know, go outside today? That was my question. Okay, so you, you want to be able to do that. And you can ask the same question. You know, you can maybe do it three times, the same one. So you get a response, you know, the first response that I got was no. And then do it again, right? Do the same, ask the same question, right? Shuffle the cards, shuffle them. Make sure that you shuffle that you don't know which card is where. That's very important. Don't, don't try to fool yourself here, okay? Because the only person you, you're um, fooling is yourself because you're not getting the, the accuracy that you're looking for. Shuffle the cards and then place your hand over the card and see which one it is, okay? And you may want to ask the same question about three times. Okay, I don't recommend going and doing it a lot more times. If you see that you got a different response all three times, let's say you got yes, no, maybe you got three res three different responses all three times. That means your intuition isn't as strong as you as it is to answer the question. Okay, or it could be that the question isn't a, a clear cut question. Is it in my highest interest to go outside today is pretty clear cut. The question is, you know, is it in my highest interest? Okay, so you want to use, is it in my highest interest or is it in the highest interest of, depending on the question, is it in the highest interest of whatever? Is it in my highest interest of blah, blah, blah? Okay, um, you, you want to avoid the shoulds in this scenario because the universe doesn't respond to should in that form. Should is, is almost like one of those words that we make ourselves wrong. The universe never makes us wrong. We're always right in the eye of the universe. Okay, I want you to remember that. You are always right in the eye of the universe. Okay, there's always a reason uh, that we do things and act a certain way and how we feel about certain things. And um, the universe is completely on our side always always on our side okay so have fun with this exercise if you are watching and this is the replay you can submit questions and I'll answer the questions as they come along about anything around this um, remember that if you share this video you get entered into a drawing that I do every single month to enter to win a free one hour coaching session with me, a value of $200, yours completely free if you win. Okay, so the person who wants it the most will win. So know that as you start putting in your intention, oh, I am the winner, not I will win, is I won. I'm the November winner. And if you affirm that, you will see that you will be the one being picked out. But in order for you to be picked out, of the drawing because I'll do the video at the end of the month um, you have to share this video on your Facebook why should we ask several times and not only once great question thank you for asking the reason why I recommend for us at this moment in time to ask several times is because you're still developing your intuition so you you want to see the accuracy this is all about measurement OK, um, I know that a lot of the, if we just do it once and you feel good with that one response, go right ahead. What the reason why I say to do it at least three times the same question is so that you can see and build on on the accuracy of it. Right. To have the measurement. If you got two out of three times, the response was yes, then you feel good about moving into that response versus questioning, um, should I do it? Because there's something important here. We're always talking ourselves out of what we want. Okay, we talk ourselves out of what we want. And this is by building on your intuition and having um, something that is measurable helps. This is all just about the measurement of it. Thank you. That's a wonderful question. Um, and I know that it helped a lot of people as well may have been asking that same question. So feel free, ask questions. Um, 
I really enjoyed it. Thank you. I'm going to put a thumbs up on that. <laughs> Thank you so much for asking that question. And if you want to get the videos, the, the previous videos, so this is lesson number 12, part number 5. Each lesson has its own individual thing, but for the month of November um, and some of October, I decided to do develop your third eye and intuition. And it's because it's such a, there's so many components of it. I have broken it up into sessions where we have part one, part two, part three, part four, and today part five. And I will be continuing doing that until I feel that I've given you enough information so that you can feel strong in your intuition. Intuition is so important. Having your third eye activated is important. Um, and the reason why th this is important is because it eliminates the questioning. It eliminate, it, it's a measurable thing and I try to make it as fun as possible. Um, and these are still activities that I do every single day. So I hope you enjoy it. In order to get that, I'll have the link below. Um, it's miracleswithinus.net backslash pledge. Okay, miracleswithinus backslash pledge, dot net backslash pledge. So can I ask, so can I ask things I can prove for the first time? Yes, that's a wonderful question. So you want to ask questions that aren't so difficult first, that, that you can prove, um, have some evidence, right, with, you know, if your question, like my question was, is it in my highest interest, is it in my highest interest to go outside today? That was the question that I asked. Right. So you can measure it by doing the activity or doing the opposite of the activity. So the opposite of my activity would be to go outside in the afternoon and then see what happens. Did I have a good experience or did I not have a good experience? You can measure it by your feelings. So there's different measurements, right? There's emotions, um, our feelings. Um, a physical experience, maybe you went outside and you lost your glove, like right now it's cold, so you're wearing gloves and hats here in New York City, so, oh, I lost my glove, well, that maybe that's why my, the universe said not to, that it wasn't in my highest interest to go, because the universe knew I was going to drop my glove, um, and that I would feel sad somewhat about losing my glove, right, and that's just, I'm just using that as an example, yeah? So you can measure it by doing what it says or doing the opposite of what it says. And it's important to go back and trace the feelings, the emotions and the experience that actually happens. If you just say, OK, is it in my highest interest to go outside today? And it said no. And you don't go outside, but you don't measure what happened inside. Oh, I got so much work done or I saw that movie. I I got a phone call. I was waiting for a package and that package showed up when I would have went on that walk. Whatever it was, you want to go back and measure it. And that's going to be really important when um, like trusting your intuition. Remember, this is all about right now we're working on our trust factor. Okay, trust is going to be a big thing with our intuition. And in order for us to move into making bigger decisions like, should I get married? Should I have more children? Should I have children? Should I move? Should I relocate? Should I leave my job? Should I start a new business? Should I start a new project? All of these really big questions, right? And you wouldn't use should, you would use, is it in my highest interest? <laughs> so here I go. Ah. So in my highest interest, is it in my highest interest? And you just fill in the blanks. OK, this is going to be so much fun if you allow yourself to do it. OK, and if you do it with other people, it will be fun as well. OK, so I hope you enjoy this. I really enjoyed doing this for you. I will have the links below for um, to watch the previous videos on joining the pledge. So you will get it straight into your inbox. So all you have to do is submit your name and email address and you will get the information straight into your inbox with all past lessons um, and we are now in lesson number four and you could watch the ones that you like and the ones that you don't you could skip those um, and I'm really excited to share that and I want to remind you that you can join me on December 11 to dare to break free from karma if you are not in New York City and you still want to join you can join virtually if you click on the link on my Facebook page the miracles within us Facebook page it says sign up 
If you click on it, it will take you directly to um, the information to see, you know, the details of the event, see if it's something that you want to do. And also you can purchase your ticket to join virtually or the online, right? I think it says join online, okay, um, only. So you can do that and you will be able to join the session and get the healing and not only the healing, but also creating the new possibilities for you for 2017. So I'm really excited to have that and to be here and to do this with you all. And this is my annual event. And if you want to learn more about that on my Facebook page, you'll find the videos from people of testimonials of people who have done this in the past and um, in my last session last year. And you could see the experience. You see a little bit of what goes on there. And what the people were left with, right? I could sit here and tell you all about it, but when other people say that this is what they left you left themselves with with the event, this is what they got out of it. That is where the the real shifts start happening. So I invite you to check that video out. I have it in my Facebook feed. So I send you all lots of hugs, lots of love, lots of kisses, and until the next time, I love you unconditionally. Namaste. Enjoy your day.